Hi everyone! Today I'm sharing with you how I turned this tiny unused balcony into a beautiful cozy place to relax and unwind. My friend Lisa is a life coach and the author of the book Finding Fabulous. She asked for my help to make her less than fabulous balcony into a cozy space for her to relax and unwind with her dog Leo. Now the first thing that caught my attention about the balcony is this opening here that gives onto the neighboring balcony. I got this idea to make it into a picture frame and actually make it a focal point of the balcony. The neighbor was on board with this idea, but since this is a rental apartment, we got the okay for the project as long as we didn't make any holes in the walls. So here's how I did it. First, I built the frame by making four panels out of 1x2s and 1x6 pine boards. The wood cost about $10. And by attaching the boards together with screws, it gave me solid panels that fit the width of the wall. I attached the bottom panel to the side panels and then I added 1x2s to the front edges of all the panels to form a lip. Then I stained everything with a couple of coats of semi-transparent stain in a color called coffee from Bayer. I slid the frame into the opening and I didn't attach the top panel on purpose just to make it easier to lift and to handle. Then I just slid the top panel into place and attached it to the rest of the frame using brackets and screws. The frame is held in place at the front thanks to the lip that I made with the 1x2 and I could have also added a 1x2 to the other side of the frame once it was installed but another option is just to add a bracket at the top. It rests against the wall and prevents the frame from moving forward. This thing isn't going anywhere and it's all without making any holes in the walls. To fill in the frame, I found this beautifully carved wood panel at Target for $50 and I hung it using an eye screw and paper stem wire from the craft store. To keep the panel from moving around, I secured both sides with wire and eye screws. I love that the design is beautiful from both sides and gives a sense of privacy while still keeping things open and airy at the same time. The next part of the design was figuring out seating. Now Lisa wanted something comfy to lounge in, so the first option I tried was this chair and ottoman that I showed you in my last video. Now because the balcony is so narrow, it's a tight fit which doesn't leave any room for side tables. So my solution for that was to make a table that slides over the arms. For the top of the table, I used 3 quarter inch plywood and I chose this beautiful hand painted paper to cover it. I applied Mod Podge to the paper and the plywood, took out any of the air bubbles and sealed it with more Mod Podge. Then I framed it out with some glue on wood edging that I then stained and to add a touch of the gold that is found in the design of the paper, I used a gold sharpie to add a detail around the edges. And last, I added a coat of polyurethane sealer to the entire surface to protect it even more. I made the base of the table with 1x6 quarter inch thick poplar boards, and I spaced them out so that they fit tightly over the arm to make sure that the table doesn't move. Lisa and Leo both enjoyed this setup, and it worked really well. But Lisa realized that she preferred having seating that was good for lounging and would also allow for seating more people. So that's when I came up with option number two, which revolves around this custom bench. The design for this bench is very similar to the benches that I made for my New York apartment. The wood cost about $30 and I had it all cut at the hardware store. I started by making the frame with 1x4s. For the top, I used four 1x5s and two 1x2s and I left a half inch overhang all around the sides. To make the bench about 25 inches wide, I spaced out the boards 3 quarters of an inch apart. Using a scrap piece of 1x4 is helpful to make sure the spacing is even everywhere. I used 2x3s for the legs and also for the bracing. I find it helpful to mark where the bracing pieces join ahead of time. And using scrap pieces of 2x3s to hold up the bracing while installing it is also really helpful, especially when you're working alone. I stained the bench using the same stain as before, and I would definitely recommend staining all the wood before putting the bench together. It's much easier than trying to stain in between the gaps once the bench is put together. You'll find a detailed tutorial on how to build this bench on my website, engineeryourspace.com. With the bench finished, I chose to add a rug to make the space feel more like an outdoor room. It was only $13. I just love the color and pattern and because it's made out of plastic, it's actually really easy to clean, which is great for an outdoor rug. The next thing I did was to add some interest to that side wall with a trellis. 
Since I couldn't make any holes in the walls to secure it, I ended up attaching a 1x2 to the bench that I then used to attach the trellis to. Doing this makes it possible to center the trellis on the wall and the weight of the bench is more than enough to keep the trellis from falling over. I wasn't concerned about the bench moving because it's such a tight fit, but one way to prevent the bench from accidentally moving away from the wall is to put a block here. With this setup, I was able to hang a staghorn fern here on the trellis, which I love. These ferns are so beautiful, they're like works of art. I used old redwood fence posts that I cut and attached together to hang the fern. Next, I added some inexpensive outdoor cushions from Ikea and some colorful outdoor pillows to make the bench more comfy. Now remember the table that I made earlier for the armchair? I wanted to reuse it somehow because I just love the beautiful design of this paper. So after thinking about it for a while, I came up with this idea to repurpose the top into a fold-down table that hangs over the balcony wall. When it's up, it's the perfect place for a snack. It doesn't take up any room when it's down and you can still use the top part, like I did here to display this succulent. I couldn't find a pot that was just the right size for it until I came across these really pretty espresso cups. Turns out it was a perfect fit. I'll be sharing how I made this table and the one for the armchair soon. Now to complete the seating area, I added a folding chair from Ikea and a round table from World Market. The color is just beautiful and it can also double as seating if you need it. Next I turned my attention to the other side of the balcony. Now that space had to be mostly left clear because there's a washer and dryer hiding behind that door. So here I kept things really simple. I added a plant and hung a pretty gold mirrored mosaic frame. I used sisal rope to hang the frame from an over the door plastic hook from the dollar store. I spray painted it to match the door and drilled a hole at the bottom to fish the rope through. To add some ambiance at night, I installed solar lights and I also added the same kind of smart outdoor LED lights that I have on my balcony. They're really great for highlighting architectural features like the beautiful wood carving. And I love that you can change the color of the lights from your smartphone. It really makes the balcony a beautiful place to hang out in the evening. And it looks like Lisa and Leo are pretty happy with the way it turned out. Hopefully this makeover gave you some ideas you can use in your outdoor space. Look in the video description below for links to what I use in this makeover and also to Lisa's book Finding Fabulous. It's really a great read and I have a feeling it will inspire you to bring a little bit more fabulousness into all aspects of your life. And if you're looking for more inspiration for your outdoor space, you can click on these videos here. Now don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you want to find out what I'm up to day to day, follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.